something just touched that bear. The one time I walked in, I turned and I walked right back out, and I won't go back in. He just started yelling obscenities at us through our recorder. We all end up the same way. When you go, we all end up dead. That was a really warm welcome. I think we literally just walked in here. We're Amy and Adam, and this is Kindred Spirits Inside the Investigation. So this investigation is at the Bell Grove Plantation in King George, Virginia, and we were called in by Michelle. She and her husband run a bed and breakfast there. This obviously was a former, like, actual working plantation. There's a caretaker house on the property that they have been wanting to do something with, but Michelle has had such awful paranormal experiences in that space, she won't set foot in it, and if it were up to her, she would burn that house down person that's in the house that has claimed that space can be threatening at times. I, I personally do not do anything around it. I try to stay away from it. You don't need, do you go in it? No. The one time I walked in, I turned around and walked right back out, and I won't go back in. We went in to kind of try to figure out what was happening and hopefully get to a point where it wouldn't come to burning the caretaker's house down. Yeah. We got to actually stay there for the entire time we were investigating. That's a completely immersive experience for us because not only do you investigate all night long, but you wake up and there you are in the investigation right. space. Yeah, I mean, every morning I would wake up um, and Adam would sleep until noon. Thank you. And I would go downstairs and I was just sitting there reviewing at the dining room table and something started just banging on the wall behind me. And I recorded it on my phone and everything and we never found out what it was. It was such a strange experience, but I guess one that happens there pretty often. Pat. What is that? We did have uh, the DVR set up the entire time. It was in almost every single room that we could possibly put it in that had activity. It was filming us all night when we were sleeping. Where I was staying, there was an apparition of a woman in white standing near the bed, and I, you know, was hoping that that would happen. I was like, you know, please let that happen. It didn't, but at least we had the equipment and we had everything set up and ready to go. In the house itself, there had been a lot of experiences, a lot of um, disembodied voices, they'd seen apparitions, uh, and, and really, Michelle had done so much research on the house already. Like, she was pretty set that in the house, the activity had to do with, like, the former families that had lived there, right. the former slaves who had been there uh, when it was working as a plantation. Uh, there were a number of deaths over the years in the house, including the deaths of a few children that were buried on the property. This family was actually buried on the property. So that, we think, probably attributed to the activity that was in the house itself. Is there a little boy in here who likes to play? Because we brought... Hey, I like all the hair with you. Something just touched that bear. Can you knock that bear off the chair? We heard sometimes you like to knock things off of tables. Got touched again. Yeah. There are a lot of objects that over the years Michelle and other employees have kind of dug up uh, in the grounds of Bell Grove. And so a lot of it's on display there. So I think this is really where the trigger object proximity sensor came in handy. Um, you know, one of the things they dug up was um, a bent nail, which supposedly was something used in hoodoo as protection. They would bury it in the ground around an area that they wanted to be protected. So we used that uh, with the trigger object proximity sensor to see if that would be touched or set something off. When we went into the caretaker's house, which is, would have been the overseer's house, that house, though, did have an entity that was very angry and wanted nothing to do with us. I could see why Michelle was so scared of it. We used our digital voice recorder to try to communicate with him, and he just started yelling obscenities at us through our recorder. So whoever is in this house who is non-living, we can hear to visit you. Are you up for some visitors tonight? Oh my God.
That was a really warm welcome. I think... They literally just walked in here. It was a very hard investigation for us because we suspected it was the overseer. So we had to kind of go against our gut because we clearly... He's not a nice dude. He was not a nice man. I don't believe, we, had... we don't believe in anything that he was doing, yet you can't go in there and speak to him as such because you're not gonna get anywhere by belittling a human being at this point. I mean, we all end up the same way when you go. We all end up dead, right? No matter who he was or what he did in his life, we had to approach him with some sort of, what's we the word? We had to word? be delicate. Yeah, we had it, to ha approach him as though we just kind of weren't even talking about that part of his life. But we did notice that when we started talking to him normally, he started talking back to us mm. and we started getting responses and kind of established a boundary for Michelle because he was not going anywhere. So it was more like, we kind of had to make an agreement with him that he would not leave that space. And he seemed okay with it. Mm -hmm. We needed Michelle to kind of establish that boundary too. Baldwin, this is Michelle. I'm sorry. It's no, okay. no, right. you're, good. It's one, you're good. It's one step at a time. We were never able to get her to the point of being comfortable enough to go back mm -hmm. into that space, but we were able to provide her answers. We were able to tell her who was there and why they were there and what she could do about it. So as soon as they can kind of overcome this obstacle, it's gonna be huge for them, but at least now they have some answers. Yeah, I mean, I, one of the big things that I think that we do is to know as much information about the location that you're in, right? Mm -hmm. History, research, time period, everything. That is key and that is important because you have to know who you're talking to. You have to be able to kind of put yourself in their position and empathize with what they were dealing with so that you can have a conversation. And I think having that knowledge and having that history is exactly what led us to a lot of the answers that we got. Thanks for watching, and keep up with Kindred Spirits and more behind-the-scenes action on Travel Channel Go.